Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwalk. Over there, we have John Lewandowski. Hey. For those of you wondering, we've had a bit of a bad two week in our home. Um, one, we're not feeling good. Two, we've had some personal stuff going on, leaving it at that. Yeah. Um, but we're here today, today or tonight to, sh to tell you 31, 32 teams in the NHL. We're going to tell you one thing we like, one thing we hate about each team. Depends on the team basis of team by team. Right. Um, and that includes Seattle. There's got to be something about Seattle already that we kind of don't like or don't like how they did something in, in the early on. or It depends. We'll just go with that. It, it depends. Right. Um, but we're going to go by division. So since we're going by division, we're going to start with the uh, Atlantic, the Atlantic division. So with the Atlantic division, we start with Boston. Okay. Yeah. With starting with Boston, one of the things I like is their fan base. At the same time, the fan base may be loyal, but the one thing about their fan base I also don't like is if you're not from Boston, you can't like Boston. That is a problem. When your fan base is. is loyal, that they go, oh, well, you're from this area, but you like our team, you bandwagon jumper. You know, I don't uh, like that about your fan base. Otherwise, I have no problem with your team. I don't like Brad Marchand, but that has nothing to do with your team. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't like Brad Marchand, so that could be one of the keys of why I don't like your team. But I do like Craig Smith. Right. That's one of the things I do like. I like Craig Smith on the team. I think that they're, they've they got a positive basis to go on. All righty. John, got anything for Boston? Um, well, I like that most of, from what I've seen watching Boston over the years, they've always come with a hard-hitting team. They tend to have hard-hitting defensemen, hard, hard play in their style of hockey. Um, I don't know that there's really much that I don't like. I mean, yeah. they are an original six. Yeah, um, I could tend to agree with that. Up next, this one's going to hurt me a bit, but Buffalo. What I don't like about Buffalo, ownership. I do not like their ownership. At the me current, neither. At the current moment, I do not like their ownership. However, that loyal fan base that's it out with them. Yeah, right. Yeah. That is one thing I love about Buffalo. They're such a small town compared to the rest of the NHL cities that they have this attachment to any pro sport there. Talk about the Bills, the same. Yeah, they really do. They're double, double I think it's either double A or triple A team. You know, they, they just gravitate to their sports teams and, and I respect that. That may get a little crazy. Right. You know who I'm talking about, Bill's Mafia. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, you know, there's that. Um I, I don't got much more to go on with Buffalo. Yeah, me neither. Um Detroit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Detroit. During the 90s, I despised you. <laughs> I well, hated the Avalanche rivalry, man. I was a huge Patrick Waugh fan. So Me too. I, I despised Detroit. More in particularly Todd Bertuzzi, but that's beside the point. Right. And, and uh, McCarthy, those two I could do without. Yeah. But, you know, they had a great hockey team. That they team really was, did. You know, if it wasn't, they, they, how do I put it? 
they brought Russians into hockey and, and made yeah. it look like it was, you know, they literally changed the game to the way it is today. Right. They did. Because, you know, now you can't draft out. You can't just go grab a guy out of Russia and go, Hey, well, you're coming with us. Right. Yeah. You know, had that been the case, you'd had, you'd had every team in the NHL trying to grab Ovi. Right. You know, so it just is what it is there. Florida. Now, the Florida Panthers are an interesting concept here. Yeah, you know my... what I hate about the Florida Panthers? What? Their current logo. Uh, it's more of a throwback logo. I know, but their current logo was, their old logo was so futuristic that it could have stayed. Right. I, I, I just don't like the new logo. Um, I, I, uh, however, what I do like is that they put a solid hockey team out there every year, whether the fans are there to support them or not is another thing. Right. Um, that is their downside. That is what I really don't like about the Florida Panthers is their fan base is so fickle. They really are. And it's, it, it, it's been that way for years, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, if you're not doing well, they don't show up. And it's that simple. Right. You know, I mean, you think about it. When, I mean, I don't know if it was the loss in the Stanley Cup back in the 90s or what, but there's just something with the fans. Because Tampa's not having a problem. No, not at all. So it makes me wonder. Um, the one thing, like I said, I do like about Florida is they do put consistent hockey out. May not always be good, but it's consistent. Right. Um, Ottawa. <laughs> Ottawa, same thing as Buffalo. Don't like your ownership. Right. You have this giant gap in Ottawa where you could go anywhere to put your arena. And you put right. it in the middle of nowhere alongside a freeway. You know, I, I, I just don't understand it. Right. Ottawa, you are complex. I hope you do well, but Ottawa, yeah. I see it working, buddy. I can see you uh, taking a little trip to Quebec. But I'm not going to get into that. Nordiques fans, just wait no. until Atlanta gets another expansion team. Then wait 10 years, you'll get one. Um, you guys, I'll explain that at the end of the video, that joke there. Uh, Tampa. Tampa, I do not like you based on your salary cap this year and winning a cup. Right. Let's just be real here. That's not sour grapes. That's nothing. You broke the rules. You shouldn't be thriving off of it. Right. So that's that simple. Toronto. Tampa, the one, uh, I was actually going to say, Tampa, the one thing I do like is your pregame stuff's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, it is. They have a heck of a team down there doing their pregame. You know, their, their, their pregame show for the fans in the building is pretty cool stuff to watch. I've seen a lot of it on YouTube. Um, a lot of NHL teams have pretty cool intros to their things, their stuff, but Tampa, they're pretty good with their lightning uh, Tesla coils and all that stuff. It's really cool to see. Yeah. Um, but on to Toronto. Toronto, you are your worst and own worst enemy. Yeah. That is what I love and hate about you. You can put on great hockey, but once the playoffs hit, it's Chokesville. Yeah. That is a major problem that you need to fix, like, because your fan base has been loyal since day one. Absolutely have. And y'all are starting, you, 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 you want to hear something funny? Who has the longest championship drought now, now that the Bucks won a championship? I'm guessing Toronto. It is Toronto. Toronto has the long, Toronto Maple Leafs have the longest uh championship drought by a team that's won a championship. They have the longest. Ryan. 
So Toronto, you know, you got a great team. I give you props for that, but you oh, got to yeah. do better. Carolina. What a bunch of jerks. I hate that about them. Of lately, they live up to that moniker. I don't. I, I, I liked the slogan in the beginning until we had to play them a lot. Right. Then I realized it was not a slogan. It was a fact. Yeah. And I don't like how you play the game. If you're going to cheap shot, draw penalties, and do all that, you might want to take a reaction to Mighty Ducks 1. Um, it just doesn't work. Not in today's game, didn't work then, doesn't work now. Right. Um, I'm just going to say that there. What I do like is that they do have stability a little bit, but I'm a little worried about their uh, financial side. Um, yeah, in the future. That, yeah. For the future for them. Um, after that, we've got Columbus. Columbus. Columbus is one of those where I'm 50-50 on the shot. I, I love yeah, yeah. playing against them because they were, when they were in the Central, Nashville had a great rivalry with them. Now that they're out. Yeah, they really do. They don't really have a stable rival. And they're not no. in division with Detroit. Um, they're in the Metro, which I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that we have switched to the Metropolitan. Uh, but they are in the Metro, so they don't really have a stable rival. They're kind of in the middle in the land of no return when it comes to teams near them. Right. So like one team in, cent in the Central, which I'm going to get to in a minute as well. Um, I, I, I feel bad for their fan base because every time they start to take a couple steps forward, it's like 10 steps back. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Um, I kind of do feel for their fan base, but other than yeah. that, they're they're doing pretty well for themselves. Um, New Jersey, since Wa has left, oh what a dumpster fire you become. Mean brother. Oh, I was talking about Oliver. <laughs> oh, Oliver. <laughs> Remember they drafted him Off there. You forgot about that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> but no, no, all joking aside, Brodeur, ever since Brodeur left, which Oliver Waugh was there the whole entire time that Brodeur was there towards the end. Um, yeah. Uh, New Jersey says Brodeur has left and you've lost some key pieces like Parise. Um, it has not gone well for you. The whole uh, Ilya Kovalchuk thing did not sit well with a lot of people how you treated him right. and sent him off back into Russia and made him sit for years instead of buying out his contract or trading him. Um, I just think that right. there's a, a lot of de issues inside with the GM and, and we'll get, that's, that's pretty much it there. Yeah. The up next, we got the New York Islanders, the Islanders. Go back to the fish logo, fish fisherman logo. Your current logo yeah. makes no sense. I mean, I know it's the island of New York, and and it makes kind of sense, but go back to the fisherman. What I do like about your team is you do have a young group mixed with veterans. You have a solid hockey team. You do, and you got a great coach at Barry, and a good assistant coach at our former head coach uh, Lane Lambert. Yeah. Uh, so you so you got a lot going for you there. New York Rangers. I'm going to say this now. Just because you're an original six team does not make you ineligible to be a jerk to everybody in the league. You cannot sit here and tell me that Ryan Reeves was traded for and then given that much money to play hockey. You paid him to go fight Tom Wilson. And you know it. And the league's not going to like that if that's what it comes down to. Right. 
Because if you only play him against Tom Wilson, you're going to have issues. Yep. So that's what I hate about him. What I like about him is, you know, New York Rangers are a focal point as, as far as American hockey goes. They are yeah, they the are. pinnacle of what the NHL has built around as far as American hockey teams. Now, I know that it, it, they are not the greatest team, but they have always been under the spotlight, no matter whether they're good or not. Yeah, they really have. Which also comes from them being an original six team, and I don't like that either, but that's just that's cool. Philadelphia. Broad Street Bullies. Philadelphia, what I like about you is Ryan Ellis. Oh, we miss you, Ryan. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I kid, I kid. Philly, I like how you've built your hockey team. You've done yeah. well. Uh, Nashville got solid returns for their trade. Yeah, they did. For a rebuilding team. Um, we'll see what happens there. Uh, what I don't like about Philly is their fans. They're really aggressive, really rude. Um, and that's just – and look, Philly fans, you know it. So don't come at me for it. You know it. But I will tell you, we got a common enemy. I hate Pittsburgh. I, <laughs> All right. Speaking of Pittsburgh, I should let John go first on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Pittsburgh back in the 90s a little bit, you know, you had Lemieux and uh, they had a really solid hockey club. Not saying they don't now. Um, they've done well to maintain um, a good hockey club for a number of years, which I give them credit for. Um, I just don't like that. It feels like they're a little can be a little bit of sore losers occasion. In particularly from their captain. Right. Yeah, that is that uh, Sidney Crosby is the only reason I do not like Pittsburgh. I love Evgeny Malkin. Oh, I do too. Evgeny Malkin is a great hockey player. Sidney Absolutely. Crosby is an injury prone crybaby. And that's just my personal opinion. But watch this, Washington Capitals. Everybody here knows why I like Washington. I'm an OV fan. Have been no. since the day he stepped foot on the NHL ice. He puts on a show for the fans and does everything he can to break Gretzky's unbre quote unquote unbreakable record. Right. And hey, if he comes second and he at least comes this close, hey. He got as close as he's going to get. He gave himself five years to beat it. Right. That's a heck of a statement from him. That's a lot of confidence in yourself, too, there. What I don't yeah. know about Washington is Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson is a big thorn in every NHL team's side. Right. But I'll tell you right now, if he was on my team, I'd love him. That's just how that – Tom Wilson's one of those. He only remind, almost reminds me of Sean Avery back in the day. Yeah. It, it, it's just, he toxic. But he's a good hockey player. That's the weird part. He's so toxic that he can score. Right. You don't want to get near him. So it's like, you know, he's a good hockey player. They got a great team over there. They've built great for years to come. Well after Ovi retires. Right, they have. So um, they got TJ Oshi over there. For those of you that don't remember, just go on to YouTube and type in TJ Oshi USA Shootout. Whoop. Yep. You know, there's some memorable moments here. All right, to the central. What in the Arizona? What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be over there in the Pacific? Hmm. They got that moved. Is my legit gripe with them. Why are they in the central? I have no problems with the Coyotes. I have zero. Right. None. That's the one part about it. I have 
zero gripe with the Coyotes. I have gripe with about every other team on the list, but with the Coyotes, I haven't had a problem. They can't really sustain momentum long enough, and I think that's the problem. Ownership, yeah, the yeah. league owned them. You know, to say all that, they're – they're this team that seems like they can't die, but then they die, and then they have to rebuild, right, right. and it's just, oh. I do feel for the Coyotes. But right, I remember the good old days, uh, Jeremy Gronick and Nikolai Habibulin, and, you Jim know. Jones. Right? You know, and, and, and that's. They, really- they had a great team. They need to try and find a way to get back to having a good, solid team. And yeah, they've had some rough, rough times lately. And, and they, every time they take a few steps forward, eh, it, it, it's back to square one. And, 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 I'd love to see that Abs Coyotes rivalry again. <laughs> that was well, one that was. Well, you're going to get it this year. Yep. All righty. Chicago Blackhawks. All right. As much. As a Wisconsinite, as I hate the Blackhawks, they do a lot of great work for charity, in particular really for really the Native really. tribe, the Native Blackhawk tribe. They do a lot of work with them. So for right. them, I give them, you know, a tip of the cap for that. What yes. I don't like about them, there's a two-parter. One, their fan base, they can, they, their team can do no wrong. Right. Right. Even when they're rebuilding, we can win the cup. It's just one of those things. Um, second part, I I don't like the Wirtz family. I think that the the current how do I put it scandal is tarnishing it, and that's on their own. Um, right. But as far as that, I hate them because they're our rival. I mean, and, and, and that's that's kind of like one of those, I don't hate you because I hate your team. I hate you because, well, we're rivals. Right. I don't wish none of your players harm, but I don't, you know, your jersey I could do without <laughs> kind of thing. Right. I'd like to see something new come from them with a logo or something. Something new that stands out. Yeah, I agree. Um, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, what I like, 90s. What I hate, current administration. Uh, their current ownership and GM, which is the same, that should never happen. You should never be owner and GM. Ask the Dallas Cowboys how that works out for them. You cannot be owner and GM because then you think you're always right and it's your money, so you're doing it. That is my problem with them. Joe Sackick seems to think that he's head honcho around there. Here's the thing. When you go to the great land beyond, your kids aren't going to take over this team. They don't got the money. Neither do you. If cap stays flat and we end up in another shutdown, Colorado's going to have to be sold. There's no, there's no way somebody's going to pay $165 to sit upstairs behind a pillar to watch a hockey game. In Nashville alone, when I bought tickets, I could get glass seats for $150. In Colorado, tickets... Upstairs, behind a pillar, is $150. Center ice upstairs is $245. That comes from your ownership. You know, I understand there's money to be spent there, but man, it's crazy. I don't got anything more to say on Colorado. John, they're your favorite team. Tell us what you like and don't like. Um, I like the direction that they're going. Um, it has been frustrating over the last probably 10 years. Um, 
I will say Sackix let some players go that he should have never let go. That I honestly think had he held together, they would have already had a cup. And I know he's chasing after that cup, trying to make Colorado a dynasty again. But right now, let's just focus on getting one cup and go from there, man. Yeah. Um, and, and I agree with that to an extent, as much as I don't want to see another central team win it again. Right. And uh, forbid uh, Tampa wins it again or Pittsburgh. I want somebody who's never won one to get one for one. I mean, heck, the season hasn't even started already, and all the odds are predicting Colorado to win. Yeah. It's been this way for three years. Are you going to do it or aren't you? Well, that's the other because part. How long? You only have so many there? chances, and that seems to be what happens every time. You get close, and then you have to let certain players go, and that's, it just seems to be this never-ending chase towards a cop. Well, now with Grubauer gone, that's another one of those things where you're like... That's a blow. You should have never let him walk. Ne never let him go. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I wish... What is it? Camper? Good luck. I wish him good luck there. Um, he, he's never been a stable you, starter. You don't let a potential Vesna goalie like that go. Especially a young one. They have always had a goaltender problem since Wah retired. Whether it was David Abishire or um, Varlamov. Uh, I mean, it, they seem to find somebody who's good, and then they let them walk. And it's like, well, if you're trying to chase that cup, it starts in goal, man. You've got to have solid goaltending. If you can't show that you're going to have solid goaltending, I don't know that you're ever going to get that cup. Well, the no other, matter how try. The, the other part about what and I know we're deep diving here, but I know the other problem with Colorado lately is that, you know, um, when, you, when you get a player like, you know, Eric Johnson, right? And, and, he, and he says, hey, look, um, right. Trade me. This team's willing to buy me out. They want, you know, um, I got I to gotta put a second with it because they're buying me out. So they're eating up my cap and I'm signing. I'm willing to sign back for a lower price and you just let him walk. And you buy right. him out. You know, that's just not how you do good business. No. Um, you know, I mean, you pretty much fleece the entire league and choke everything away. You know, on the trades that you got, where you had first round picks, every part of that rebuild, you got rid of. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I believe the only one left is Nathan McKinnon. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that's that part of it when you, you traded. And you went and got, what was that, Bob Byram? And, and where's he been? He wants to go overseas and not come back until his RFA's up. Right. Because Sackick told him he's not good enough to be in the NHL. Then why did you draft him in the first round? It's just a problem. All right, on to the next team. Dallas. 1999 Stanley Cup. <laughs> John knew that was coming. From God, no. <laughs> that is why, well, that and leaving Minnesota is why I do not like you. Why I do like you is you cut Corey Perry. <laughs> you are natural, Nashville's natural rivalry because of our country atmosphere in Nashville and the country atmosphere right, in Dallas. Right. You are our natural rival. Um, I could see you having a rivalry with Colorado and Arizona down the line, but right now you are our natural rival. I love it. It is great to watch. Um, it is. It, that is an amazing thing. Um, 
That's what I like about you. What I hate about you is, well, you are a rival. The Cup in 98. And I think that was 98 or 99. 99. Um, and, uh, and moving from Minnesota, I, I thought the North Stars were, you know, healthy where they were. Right. Um, but, you know, uh, what was that? Uh, Batman and his, I want to put hockey in non-hockey market. Well, Minnesota won out there with the Minnesota Wild. And the one thing I do like. Yeah, they there, really did. The Minnesota Wild, uh, the one thing I do like is their fan base is very inviting. Yes, they are. They are very nice people. But that comes from being Midwest, because I'll tell you right now, we're like that here in Milwaukee. Um, yeah. One of the things is I went there wearing my Preds gear for a Preds versus Minnesota game and had a healthy conversation with a lot of Wild fans. And matter of fact, I wore, I think I wore my uh, Mikel Granlin Predators t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Just to rub a little salt in the wound, but, uh, you know, you guys got Fiala and you know, uh, you had Suter for a while. Um, I liked your team for a long period of time. Uh, I have a certain connection. Yeah, they, they had a good team for quite a while. I, I used to live up there. I, I, I wa Since I couldn't watch Nashville games in that market because it was always blacked out for whatever reason, um, it, it was weird, but um, I always got stuck watching Minnesota and, you know, I got to see the Preds every time they played them, and it, it was always fun. Right. Um, I, I don't really have a lot that I, I hated about Minnesota. I mean, you know, they had a little bit of gritty play when they first came into the league, but right. that's what you expect from a new team. Oh, yeah. You're trying to make a name for yourself saying, hey, I'm not going to be some pushover. Right. So I understand that Nashville's been the same way. So we're Smashville. Come on now. Um, right. Uh, so on to Nashville. Um, look, we cover Nashville. We know what we like about the team. We also know what we don't like. What I don't right. like is dang yellow jerseys. I have said this a million and one times. Hello. I hate the yellow. I prefer gold, but with with pros come cons. So I can live with it, but I can live without it. Um, the one other thing I don't like about Nashville is um, it, it is my favorite thing I like, but also can be kind of a negative thing. Okay. So block 303. You guys are awesome. I love you. But when we're losing and you start taunting, yeah, no. Right. We taunt, but we taunt not as aggressively when we're losing. You know? Right. The chant you guys use, we use. <laughs> but we got to be up by three. So actually, technically, and we've been doing that chant since the early 90s. Right. So, Nashville, thank you for learning from us down here. Um, <laughs> one of the things I like so much is, is our markets are so similar. They are. Like, we could, me and you could go down there and nothing would be different. Right. You know? Our markets are so similar in how we deal things and how we handle them, you know, compared to like our blue collar area of Wisconsin. Uh, you know, Wisconsin's a blue collar state. Um, and, yep. and Nashville's a blue collar working community. And, and they work very hard to build hockey there. They turned Nashville into a hockey town. And yep. I give them a lot of props. And it took a lot of work to keep them there because Craig Leopold was ready to move that team to Oklahoma. And then he bought it. I, I also like I also like with the Predators is um, I know a lot of teams, just about every team does charity. 
But Nashville has definitely gone above and beyond to give back to the community and their fans. Oh, yeah. Um, the frozen pucks that they leave out before every game, um, they leave out 10 of them before every game, giving away, and they post them on, on Twitter and Instagram, and, and, and they tell you to go find them, and they contain two pucks, two tickets. The puck contains two tickets. You bring the puck back to the building and they give you two tickets. Yeah. It's in like a glass kind of box puck looking thing. But, you know, and it has, you know, specific things on it that, you know, they'd be able to just, you know, distinguish, but they get back to their community. Um, they okay. had most recently a drive just to, to raise awareness um, for hunter safety, uh, led up by Mike Fisher, a former captain. Uh, yeah. uh, they have so much going on around them. Um, but, you know, if this is a rebuild, we're here for you. You know, yeah. our team goes through them. We're used, to, you know, me and John been around long enough to know it. It's not fun. No. It is what it is. St. Louis. Or two I mean, we've been through the Admirals, so, you know, we know what that's like. St. Louis, Portuzo, I hate you. Robert Portuzo has injured four Nashville Predators in the last five years. Yeah. Not cool. No, it isn't. That's called headhunting. And to my check, yep. it against the rules. But believe it or not, St. Louis, you're you're an amazing sports town. You yeah. are an amazing sports town. I just wish you had an NFL team. No uh, jokes there. <laughs> well, I, I don't got much to say on St. Louis. They are kind of in a rebuild like we are. All right. All right. Um, Winnipeg. Winnipeg is much like Nashville in, in the retrospect of their fans. Yeah, they are. Uh, they could be a little taunt happy. Uh, they could cause some some issues and uh, cause some problems for their uh, own fan base. But uh, you know, uh, we wanted to kind of get into the whole, I don't want to get into that too much. You know, um, the whole taunting of Ryan Miller's silver medal. Um, I thought that came with poor taste. Yeah. Um, you know, telling a goalie it's all his fault compared to silver medal, it's kind of uh, there's a gray area there in between the two. Yeah, there is. And you cross one side. That you should know. Um, yeah. That has been your central Pacific, Anaheim. Go back to the Disney logo. Please. Your fans and everybody are begging for it. Yep. You use it as a third jersey. Just do it. I understand. I say they just switch it. They go back to their old school home in a way and then use the jersey they're using now as their third jersey. And use the, the web foot as a shoulder patch. Right. Um, uh, that is what I hate about your team. What I like about your team is you have a young, young, Very talented young. hockey team. They do. But you got to fix a lot of them problems, mostly on the defensive side of the game. And that right. comes when those young guys get experience. Yeah, that, that comes with time, you know, comes with play. Also, all right, now here's where I can wrap up my Atlanta jokes. Winnipeg and Calgary have something in common. Does anybody in this classroom have an idea of what that is? I don't. The Atlanta Flames and the Atlanta Thrashers both relocated to Canada. Oh, yeah, I yeah. am. 
The Atlanta Flames were the original NHL team in Atlanta, and they moved to Calgary. Well, the Atlanta Thrashers moved to Winnipeg. To Winnipeg, yeah. So that answers that. Um, Calgary, your biggest flaw. Central McGinla and Mika Kippershoff has been you cannot replace them. You have tried. Right. But you cannot build a steady team. Um, you just right. lost Giordano and you have not replaced him. Um, so with that, there's a little bit of a gray area. Um that's that's kind of a, a, a all I gotta say as far as them negatively, positively they've got a great hockey right. team that if they could get it to click. Yeah. If you could get on paper, they have a great hockey team. Oh yeah. You just can't get it to click. And sometimes that comes down to coaching. Is your coach compatible right. with the players that you have? That's a question Nashville will now have to answer this year as something we've said. Um, right. Edmonton. Edmonton, your biggest problem is your greatest feat. Yeah, won the NHL draft lottery three years in a row. Right. You won it again two years later in drafting a guy by by the name of Connor McDavid. Personally. I do not like you because you traded away a dynasty. Well, let's be real. Everybody yeah, traded away. Uh, let's be real here. Everybody you traded away never really did that well anywhere else. But it, it, right. it, 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 it is a mess over there in Edmonton because you have such high expectations on you. Yeah, you do. It is much like the uh, one team we forgot in the Atlantic. Oopsies. <laughs> no more oops. I crack jokes, I crack jokes because we forgot Montreal. Yes, we did. I was about to ask. Montreal. We kind of left Montreal out. Check our draft video. It'll give you all the answers you need. Check out our draft video and our recap on the draft. And it will give you all our first round draft coverage of you know, the NHL. And it will tell you all you need to know on why we don't like Montreal. Why we do. Caulfield and believe it at that. Um, <laughs> what? No, I was chuckling. <laughs> Andrew's oh, all the way. Oh, I couldn't see you, so I was like, I know my internet's being a little wonky. Yeah, we're trying to get through this and grit, grit our teeth and bear it. L.A. King. Yeah. Yeah, like it. Oh, what do I say about you guys? Go back to the black and purple. I miss the black, silver, and purple. Me too. But call me old-fashioned. What I do like about your team is Anze Kopitar is an amazing captain, does a lot of good charity work, and yeah. I love what LA does for their community. Um, on the flip side, I believe that LA was good for so long. They're now in the position that Nationals in, where you're like, "How do I sustain this?" Right. Um, you're in the position Pittsburgh was in, the position that you know Boston's going to be in in a couple years. You know, right. um, it's just uh, too many question marks. Not enough answers. And to all the new fans out there for hockey, rebuilds happen for any team. It eventually happens. 
Yeah, any new fans of hockey, if you're just getting into your team and they won a cup and two years later, it's just, wow. That happened. Trust me. It, it, it really does. It happens more than you think, especially in hockey. Yeah. Um, so, Los Angeles, I believe you'll be back up there. Me too. You got a good young core. You got an old veteran core. It all depends on how much more Jonathan Quick has left in the tank. Yes. That's what it's really going to come down to. It is. They did really well for themselves in the draft over the last few years as well. So with the youth, make oh, yeah. a little bit of rejuvenation for him. Uh, Cal Peter. Peterson is a good backup goalie, maybe the replacement for, for quick, but I can't guarantee it. San Jose. Right. San Jose. What can I say about the Sharks? Oof. You know, San Jose is kind of like Anaheim, where when they were great, you hated them. Now, right. oh, you feel bad for them because the collapse has been it. Yeah, it has. Stuck here with all this cap, and you're just not getting to that next level, and you're now you're falling down. Yeah, it, you it, are. It's, it's a pain in the neck. Um, Vancouver's fans can uh, identify with that. Yeah, they um, can. All right, next up. Now, hear me, Seattle. Please hear me. Seattle, I'm not ripping your team. I like that you're here. In fact, open the season against you. Yeah. I hate that you're here. You took one of my favorite players, the Cali Yard Croc. Ah. Now we're going to miss him. But please take care of our guys, you know. They were some good people. You guys got Colin Blackwell, another good person. You know, you guys got some good yes. people. Um, oh, you know, don't ruin it, please. They are good. Like I said, I'm not talking. And see, that's this. Seattle is like, how do you put it? They're at the cusp of being their own worst enemy when you come in. Because you have the option to take all these great players and they avoided them like the plague. You know, and, and, and I think a lot of that came back to the being a little scared of the cap. Makes sense, though. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I know I was confused when the expansion draft happened. I was like, there were so many good players. But at the same time, I can see them wanting to leave the amount of cap space they left open for building in the future. I agree with that 100%. So um, one, of, one of the other things, is, 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 as far as Seattle goes, I cannot wait. I will personally be watching that first game between Seattle and Vancouver. I cannot wait. Um, I love a good rivalry. It's like Calgary and Edmonton, Boston right. and Montreal. The Rangers and Islanders in New Jersey, all three of them just clash. They tear it up. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Washington, they go at each other. Yeah. Nashville and Dallas and St. Louis, they all rip each other up. Chicago, uh, St. Louis, and Winnipeg rip each other up, along with Nashville's in that mix, because they're right in the middle of everything. Right. Uh, you know, there's so much to be excited for for that rivalry. Uh, Vancouver, your biggest problem. Vancouver, your biggest problem is your fan base. You expect too much. You're putting right. a lot of pressure on some young talent. Yeah. Here's the thing, and I'm going to say this. This kind of goes for every NHL team. If you put too much pressure on a young talent, you will find that they bust more than they, they succeed. 
See, right. Connor yeah. McDavid didn't have a lot of pressure on him when he came in. You know why? Because Taylor Hall was there. He already had all the pressure. <laughs> so Vancouver put all the pressure on Elias Pedersen. Or, yeah, Elias Pedersen. And, and you're seeing him slide down the talent pool. And that's not a good thing if you're right. talking about Vegas. You've only been around a few years. But God, I hate you. What an impact. People on Twitter do no. way too much of this. They are constantly yipping and yapping and barking and whining and Lightning. Look, you made it to the cup in your first year, something no other expansion team did, but you lost to Ovechkin. We're probably the right. best goaltender since Brodor. Right. With Flurry. And then you never won the big one because you're always putting your money somewhere else. Right. And you don't go in you know, the, the Neil Nolan Patrick trade with Nashville was dumb for you guys. Cody Glass is going to prove you wrong. Right. And how you treated Flurry is beyond me. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> it, it was just utter, and, and, and this is where I'm saying it was utter disrespect for a legend of this game. Yeah. And and look, that just tells me all I need to know about your organization, about your fan base. Look, you're both passionate. This is why a lot of people say the national fan base right. and the biggest fan base are two of the most passionate fan bases because they love their team. Vegas, do you really have the fan right. base? Because when you have to rebuild, you're about to find out who your true fans are. And how yeah. many of them were just bandwagon. See, that's where you have to ask yourself that question. There's sometimes you've got to ask yourself a few questions you may not like. Look, I've been saying right. this team right here since 1998. This team right here since 1992. I was born in 1989. So that leaves me <laughs> these guys since I was three and these guys since I was about eight or nine. When they first right, came right. and announced their, their affiliation with these guys. And I've been shopping at Hockey Locker my whole life. <laughs> it used to be a family right, owned right. business by, a, by an older couple. And I loved going in there. They were always so sweet. Milos takes good care of you. That has been our one thing we like and hate about each team. We have more yeah, content yeah. coming for you in a little bit. We will be talking about the NHL remaining top free agents. There isn't much left, but we'll get into it. So, for From Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Locker. We will see you guys later. Peace.